good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day you are listening to this podcast. I am hoping it has been a good day for you so far. Thank you for joining me today. You are listening to Conversations with David Balzer, and I am your host, David Balzer. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Hello, world. This is David Balzer, and we are going to have a conversation today, and you have joined me with Conversations. I'm going to turn this down with David Balzer. I am so excited to be here today. Um, Andy really um, helped me, pushed me into, I wanted to do it, but just kind of, you know, challenged me to get back into the word with you guys, with you guys online. Um, I just want to talk to you today, have a conversation with you today. Um, I have my phone here, so hopefully I can see you guys. If you guys let me know who's on. Um, I can conversate with you guys here. I don't know about the delay. I'm looking into the camera right now. I can't see anything, but when I look down here, I know there's three people watching at this time, so welcome. Um, I'm glad that you uh, joined us. Uh, Before I begin, um, understand uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, here at uh, Brookville House of Worship, 227 Main Street, Brookville, Pennsylvania. We'll be here doing a Wild One service and tomorrow morning, roughly 10-ish, 11-ish, somewhere in the morning, uh, mid-morning there, we're going to be doing Flow and Grow. Me and Andy are going to get together in the, um, <clears throat> in the room where it's really nice and comfortable. I'm down here at the church today. We'll be in his studio tomorrow. So, um, yeah, we'll have that going on. I uh, just want to let you guys know, men, uh, March 31st at 7 o'clock at night, and April 1st, which is the next day, Saturday, all day, we're going to have a men's conference here. Um, Pastor Terry Smith will kick it off on Friday night. I'll end it on Saturday night, uh, Wild One service. And let's see, Jamie Good's going to be doing it on Saturday afternoon. And uh, let's see, Jason Hanser is going to be joining us. And we're also going to have a panel uh, with all of us there to take your questions, men, as you Join us on those times. Guys, if you do me a favor, make sure you tell uh, the men to come out uh, on those times. Make room for them. Make make time uh, to come out and see us. There is no registration fee. There is no, um, yeah, There is. it, it costs nothing. Uh, obviously, we will be taking a love offering and everything like that. But other than that, um, sure, I, I just want to invite you guys to come on down here. Also, I want everybody to know Du Bois. I believe it's March 10th, which is a Friday night. We're going to do Church on a Go again in Du Bois at the um, cafe there, uh, the new cafe in um, uh, the Du Bois Mall. Uh, Last time we had like 75 people there, so you guys are going to probably have to show up early. We'll probably get there around 6 o'clock, 6.30-ish. You can eat there, and then probably around 7, 7.30, we're we're going to hit worship and see what God has. I'm excited. Um, the last time we all got together, it was, it was awesome. People uh, shared. We prayed for one another. It, w- it was a great time in the Lord. So these are some things coming up. Um, I know also um, Andy's going to be doing some things out ministering with uh, Kevin uh, with uh, uh, Set Free Ministries and all those things. So if you would, please, you go to brookfellhouseofworship.com. You can see what we're doing there. You can also go to our Facebook page and all those things, and we'll, we'll continue to be posting. We just really need your help um, to share, 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 um, not only what we're doing with all of our podcasts and everything and all of our live streaming, uh, but also get the, get the uh, news out, especially for the men's conference. Um, I'm excited uh, that when men get together, I'm excited what God's going to do with us and for us. So, all right, here we go. Let's pray before I get in today. Today, I want to talk to you about or have a conversation with you uh, really about the Spirit of God and how oftentimes, I'm going to be reading out of the book of Galatians chapter 3, oftentimes we, we start good. Uh, but we we think that we have to do it all. And when we get into uh, our Christian way of living and we just start living and we and we start reading the word and we see where we fall short, 
Um, we oftentimes beat ourselves up and all kinds of stuff like that. And we think we have to perfect ourselves. And really what we need to do is believe what God has already done for us in Christ. We should use our faith for that instead of our, our, our um, you know, self effort to try to measure up, um, to the standards of God. Now, if, 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 God sent the law, which is holy and good, and we couldn't get the job done then. What makes us think that we can take the word of God and try to perform it as well? We need to learn how to yield and uh, to the Holy Spirit. But more than that, we need to truly believe in the finished work of, of the cross, uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And hopefully I can bring that out in this conversation. I want to encourage you today because we all need encouragement, but this encouragement is for, uh, you know, good works. The encouragement is for you and I to go out and really be a demonstration as sons and daughters of God to be who we are in Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us. Because the Bible says, them that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And that word there, sons, there is weos, which means a mature son. Somebody say amen. And in order to be mature, what do we have to do? We have to be led. So being mature has nothing to do with knowledge, has nothing to do with how many scriptures you know, has nothing to do with how how, how you can partial the word and divide it in truth, it has everything to do with action, walking in love, and yielding to the promptings, the impulses of the Holy Spirit so that the kingdom of of God can come to earth. And as the scriptures say, the kingdom of our God uh, are the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and of, of his Christ. Amen. So let's start uh, by praying today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that are watching right now. I thank you for those that will be watching um, in times to come. Father, as Paul prayed, I prayed. Paul prayed, let the eyes of our understanding be open, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you rest upon us, that we would know the hope to which you have called us, what is that glorious inheritance of the saints in the light, and what is that exceeding greatness of your power that is available to us simply because we believe that same mighty power that you wrought in Christ when you raised him to, from the dead and you seated him far above all power, rule, might, and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would not only see it, but experience it, grasp a hold of it, and walk in it. As Paul prayed as well, that we would be rooted and established in your love that we may know the height, the length, the width, and the depth of it, that we would be filled with all the fullness of God. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. All right, guys, let's get started here. Um, if, if, you have, if you have a Bible, if you're sitting down, if you're listening um, on, your car, on the car ride home from work or to work or whatever you're doing uh, in your daily life today, um, you can check these scriptures out. Uh, as, uh, you know, as you can, um, and as you re-listen to this, uh, this live stream or this podcast, I think Andy's going to be turning into a podcast as well. So we're going to start in Galatians chapter three and verse one. And just to give you a little basis and premise for Galatians, it's really Paul's argument against, um, what, what, we, what was known back then as the Judaizers are the ones that were Jewish but still held to the law and began to say, you, Jesus is good, you know, he's your savior, but you also need to keep the law. And um, Paul was stern, if you read Galatians 1 and 2. In fact, he went as so far as saying, let uh, the man who preaches another gospel than the gospel you heard from me, let him be accursed. He went on to say, if an angel comes to you and preaches another gospel but the gospel that you heard, let that, that angel be accursed. Why? Because the gospel is the work of God. The gospel is the work of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 3, that what the law could not do, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemn sin in the flesh, that the, re that the righteous requirement of the law could be done 
in us and through us. So in Christ Jesus, the law is fulfilled. In Christ Jesus, there is no accusation before us or before the Father on our behalf. No, the Bible says that Jesus presented us holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. The gospel is has everything to do about God. The gospel has everything to do about his love and his dedication to to prove his love for all mankind. His gospel is his righteousness and not ours. And the greatest man that God picked was Paul. And the reason why, I believe one of the reasons why he picked Paul is because Paul described himself as one, when it comes to the law, he was blameless. He was uh, a zealous for God according to the traditions of his father. Um, he kept the law to, to the full. He said he was blameless. And so he is, he detest what he believed before he got it uh, on the road to Damascus with truth, with light, and it forever changed his life. He even said, everything that I have, everything that I learned as a, as a Pharisee, as, a, as, as one that was trying to obtain right standing with God, doing everything right, fasting twice a week, giving tithes, you know, um, praying, and all of those things that the law said that uh, they must do, he, he was trying to establish his own righteousness. And when you read Romans, Romans 10, uh, you see that Paul understood that the Jewish people struggled, not only those that were saved, right, that believed in Jesus, but why the Jews um, persecuted Paul and the early church, because to give up the law, right, and to receive Christ was you had to give up everything you ever you ever knew about the things of God. And so we're not talking about a people who didn't know God because God revealed himself to the Jewish people, Israel, and now God was saying, I'm doing a new thing, and Christ is the end of the law. And so these people were trying to understand or come out or transition into the truth of who Jesus is and what he did, and they were battling on the inside of, should I believe these Judaizers, or should I believe Paul? And Paul wrote this letter for them to say, no, you need to believe the gospel. And I would say to you today, you need to believe the gospel, because the gospel is that God is not counting your sins against you. Not only that, but the gospel is also the new creation. And I think we need to understand, as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that word, uh, if any man be in Christ, uh, but if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That word new is altogether new kind of species of being which means that you are totally new. And so we have to understand what that means. We have to realize and recognize that we are new. That when Christ died, we died. When Christ rose, we rose to newness of life. And we are no longer a sinner saved by grace. We were a sinner saved by grace, right? We were, we were separated from God, the Bible says. We were aliens and strangers to the covenants and commonwealth of Israel. But by the blood of Jesus, now this is in Ephesians 2, by the blood of Jesus, he brought us nigh, or he brought us into the fellowship with him. Okay? It's so important that we believe that because it's not, God does not, did not fill us with the Holy Spirit because we did good. God filled us with the Holy Spirit because we became new. Our faith in the gospel, your sins are forgiven. Our faith in the gospel, Jesus is the only way to heaven. Our faith in the gospel is what caused the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and re- uh, renew us and refresh us and regenerate us as Titus chapter 3 describes that, that it is because of our faith in what God did has made us brand new. 
And you know the prayer I just prayed for you guys and for myself as well was, you know, that we would know the power of God is, is there for us, which is the Holy Spirit, because we believe. Not because we do, but because we believe. And, and we have to continually and constantly really see our life as what it is in truth. And in truth, you're in Christ, if you know him. If you don't know him, you're still an Adam. You're still lost. You're still unregenerated. You're still dead in your trespasses and sins. But let me tell you something. God has quickened you and made you alive because of the gospel. So Galatians chapter 3, after saying all those things. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly betrayed among you as crucified this only I want to learn from you did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith are you so foolish having begun in the spirit are you now being made perfect by the flesh our works. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, okay, he's drawing a conclusion here. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Or, as we know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of of Christ, literally hearing the words of Christ, our hearings Christ words. And we hear Christ words now, right, through the Holy Spirit of God, who is real, who is a person who is present with us at this moment, at this table right now as we're breaking down his word. I really want you to understand that when God said in Isaiah 55, he said, your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so far are my ways above your ways. And Proverbs chapter 3, we quoted a lot as Christians. Uh, 3, verses 4 and 5, I believe, or 3, 4 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not on thy own understanding, and all thy ways, or really in all thy days, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. The ability to believe is, okay, let me say it this way. The ability for you to believe what Christ says or what the word says about you or what the spirit is speaking to you is your ability to live a life that reflects the glory of God that you're already a partaker of. The mystery that Paul was trying to get across to everyone that he came in contact with was this mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ, the anointed one. The anointing is the power of God. The anointed one is the person, right? Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? So so how do we hinder or how do we stifle the glory of God coming, you know, coming out of us. Jesus said, you know, his famous scripture on the day before, uh, I think it was the day before he was crucified, or at least the last week before he was crucified in the book of John, he said, if anyone is thirsty, come unto me, and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So how are we going to get these rivers that are already on the inside of us? It's already on the inside of you. It's already on the inside of me, the river of life, the, the ability to bring heaven to earth. We're not waiting for heaven to come to earth. Heaven came to earth in the form of Jesus. Jesus went back to the Father and sent the Spirit, and the Spirit of God now has brought heaven to earth. And in fact, now heaven, the kingdom of heaven is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy, 
in the Holy Ghost. It is a spiritual thing, and it is a spiritual truth, and there is no way you can comprehend it with your natural mind. That is why the Bible declares in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, made into another, really, by the renewing of your mind that you as an individual, may prove what is that good, uh, perfect, and acceptable will of God. I, I want to I talk to you about faith in the finished work of the cross. Faith? All right, cool, thanks. I want to talk to you today about the finished work of the cross. Our faith is in the finished work of the cross, the, uh, our, the finished work of Christ. The finished work wasn't at the cross. The finished work was at the resurrection. So we have to, we, we can't, we can't, you know, we hear people, we can't stay at the cross. We have to go to the resurrection. These biblical things are this theology that we know. We know that Christ died. We know that he suffered in our place. We know that he rose from the grave. But you know what we don't know? When he died, we died. Romans chapter 6. When he was raised to newness of life, we were raised to newness of life. It's a mystery. We were co-crucified with Christ, or him with us is probably better, and we were co-raised with him, and now we're seated in heavenly places with him, right? In the heavenly players, in the heavenly places as a joint heir, a joint heir, a joint heir of Christ. I'll get to that in a second. Maybe I don't know if I will or not as far, but a joint heir. So that, so what Christ, what Jesus gets, we get because Jesus wanted to get it. You know, the number one thing Jesus get, gave us, he gave us a father. He gave us not any father. He gave us his father. My favorite scripture is in John, it's in, if I can, you know, I got all these Bible study things and I should have notes in front of me, but all I do is just speak from my heart. But it's all in the word. John chapter, I think it's John chapter 20. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, John chapter 20, verse 17. One of my favorite scriptures is, do, uh, Jesus said to her, speaking of Mary, do not cling to me. John, This is John 20, verse 17. Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and to your father and to my God and your God. Why did Jesus say my father and your father and not my God and your God first? Why, did he, why do you think he said that? Because... Well, this is my opinion, so I can't prove it, but I'll just tell you this. In my opinion, Jesus wanted to let everybody know, especially his disciples, that he was introducing them to his father in a way they had never been able to have from that point. Because when Jesus came as a resurrected uh, as the res- as a re- as a resurrected Christ, he came into the room and said, "Peace be still." And then he breathed on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. What happened? They were reconnected, reconnected to a relationship with Father God, just like Adam was in the garden. Right there, right then. Let that let that let that sink down on the inside of you. You know, you who, you out there who are trying to have, who have a poor self image of yourself, you out there who, who, who just can't seem to, you think you can't, you know, you can't get it together. You out there that think that God will never love you or accept you and all that kind of, I'm talking to you. I've been there. I'm not pointing the finger. I'm just talking to you. Jesus wanted And God the Father's greatest gift to you is relationship, and he restored that through his son. And it is not a relationship that you have to work at. It is a relationship that you are brought into and made a son or daughter of the living God. And just like you have children, if you have children out there, and you love your children, and you draw them close, and you allow them to go get the food out of the refrigerator, and you made their bed, and you bought their clothes, and and you pay all the bills, that's your dad. That's your father. The same way. How many times did Jesus take a natural thing and create a parable out of it to to try to show the people a spiritual truth? 
Let's not complicate this thing and let's not let our understanding of who we are get in the way of who we are. Can I say that again? Don't let our understanding get in the way of who we are because uh, uh, because of the truth of who we are. You can't add to what God's done. There's no amount of fasting you can do, giving, praying, and all that stuff. No, that's that's a fleshly effort. That is an effort to appease a God that's not satisfied, and that's saying that Christ was not enough. You're not doing it on purpose. You're doing it because you were taught you had to do these things, and you weren't taught that you needed to put your faith every day in the finished work of the cross, uh, the finished work of the cross, and the and the resurrection. Me and you, held in bondage by men who preach the the word of God from a position that they are better than you saying to you the reason why your prayers aren't answered or the reason why, you know, uh, this person died or that person died or the reason why you had to go through a divorce or the reason why you went bankrupt. Is, you know, some people believe, you know, in the sovereignty of God that that was just your lot in life. Well, that's that's stinking bull cocky. That's, that's not even true. Bull scubula. It's not even true. Jesus doesn't show any partiality with you. And so that's what he's trying to get across to the people in Galatia because what happened was these other people come in, these wolves in sheep's clothing came in and began to say, hey, you, Jesus is good, but you also need the law. Jesus is good, but you also need to fast. Jesus is good, but you also need to keep the Sabbath. Jesus is good, but you also need to remember the new moon and the full moon and, and you need to remember Pentecost and you need to remember, uh, the, the day of atonement and you need to remember the feast of weeks and and the all of those things and 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 Paul who was a Pharisee who dumped all that stuff in the stinking trash can said all you need is Christ why because he fulfilled the law he is the he is the the feast or a shadow or a type of of Christ all right the old testament when you read the new testament when you read 1 Corinthians let's just go there 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, when I read Galatians chapter 3 to you, it's all about asking you a question today. I'm asking you a question today. Have you begun what you began in the Spirit? Now, are you trying, are you trying to make yourself better in the flesh? Are you tired of trying? Are you tired of fighting the enemy? Are you try, are you tired of listening to the opinions of men? Are you tired yet? Because I got tired. Why am I so passionate? Why do I preach the way I preach or teach the way I teach? Because I'm telling you what, we need to focus and look upon and behold Jesus Christ. And as we behold him, we are changed into his very image from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. We are already a finished work. We can't add to it. When we became a child of God, we became a fully mature child of the living God. But what we need and what we need to grow in is in the grace of God and in the knowledge which is already there. We need our understanding open. We need our eyes to see it. We need to really realize and recognize so that we can cast down every thought and put every you know, every lie down. Why? To, to the obedience of Christ or to the knowledge of God. That's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe, start at verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. That has everything to do with you and has nothing to do with, with, with other people, has nothing to do with your friend, has nothing to do with your other believers. It's everything to do with what you believe on the inside of you. And what, when what Jesus is trying to say, what Paul is trying to say after Jesus re- and gave him the, uh, you know, what Peter's trying to say is, hey, 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 remember who you are. Walk into, pray about, Father, show me who I am. But let's turn there since we all want to, you know, Try to be better in the flesh. Do you realize when you rest, God begins to work? 
The Bible says, he that hath begun a good work in you will complete it until that day. In fact, Paul said, I know, I am persuaded that he that hath begun a good work in you will complete it. Who began the work? It certainly wasn't you and I. We couldn't even come to God unless he drew us by his spirit, right? It's him. It's you. This is a life of yielding, not doing. Doing comes out of yielding. Doing doesn't make you yield. If you do before you yield, it will become frustration. It will either become frustration for you or it will become pride to you. The Bible says knowledge puffs up. Go ahead and quote every scripture you know. Stand on the greatest platforms you ever had and you're still struggling with sexual immorality and you're still struggling with with with, uh, with images in your head and you're still struggling with loving your life and loving your wife and loving your kids and loving your neighbor. I know because... Of, Because I know. You can't perfect yourself. You can't love your enemy. Only, only, only if you know who you are. Only if you know that you have already been made to love your enemy because you're made in Christ. If only you and I knew that we could walk in love right now and we don't have to be perfected in it because love is the fruit of the Spirit, not our spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit came into our spirit and come on. You hanging with me? I got three people. Okay, so I told you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll start in verse 7, Okay. And the reason why I'm hooking these two things up is because in Galatians, Paul's saying that these Judaizers, these Judaizers were coming in and saying, you need to obey the things. I'll just use this term in the 20, you know, in 2023. Uh, you, you need to obey the Old Testament. You need to obey the Old Testament. You know, Deuteronomy 28, where it says, you know, if you obey, God will do. If you do this, God will do that. Well, you can live a life there. If you want to, because the Bible says if you stumble in one point of the law, you're guilty of it all. So you'll never get it right. But if you believe that Jesus fulfilled the law and you place your faith in him and you believe that not only God is number one uh, God, but you reverse that and you see him as father and you realize that he is not holding up a standard for you to to jump through the hoops to get something from him. Jesus said, hitherto you've not asked anything in my name. Ask and it shall be given you that your joy may be full. There's no hoops to jump through. The only thing that's keeping you and me from from the full measure of a wonderful relationship with God is allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives to the place where we see who we already are and live accordingly. If you, if you can see who you really are and you, you can't live outside of who you believe you, your, yourself to be. If you believe yourself to be a sinner saved by grace, you'll always be sinning because you'll always see yourself as a sinner saved by grace. But if you believe you're a son of God clothed in the right, like your entire makeup is righteousness and holiness. When sin comes knocking on your door, it is a foreign object. It is a foreign substance. When the devil comes to run over you, you put your foot down and you remind him that he's underneath your feet. Why? Because he's underneath Christ's feet and Christ is the one that won the battle and all we are is in Christ and we are living in his victory. Finished work of victory. Somebody say amen. Okay, so here we go. I don't know how long I've been on. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't know. But here we go. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse seven says, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious? Okay, I just read I just read to you Galatians chapter 3. Okay. So Paul Paul wrote Corinthians 2. Paul is saying that the glory of the spirit is much more glorious than the law 
And in, it's much more, it's much more, not only just glorious, but it's much more powerful than the law. Remember what I read, Romans 8, 8, what the law could not do? You know what the letter of the law will do? You know what the letter of the word will do here? It will kill you. Because in the New Testament, the Bible says you're supposed to live a certain way too. But if you, but if you don't believe that you're already holy and you're already righteous and you're struggling with, 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 with sin, then you don't know who you are. I don't know who I am. See, religion teaches you we will always be in a state of sin. It's called, there's three types of sanctification, right? There's positional sanctification. Um, there is, which means, you know, we're in Christ. Then there's this sanctification that you, you, you become more and more and more righteous and holy. And then there's the, the finished part of sanctification is when you die, everything will be right. That, that's, that's the only way man could describe it because man didn't understand who they were. God didn't come to clean you up. God killed the old man and made a brand new one after the image and likeness of Christ. And Christ was sinless and spotless, and you are too. Oh, I see the heresy. You're a heretic. I'm not a heretic. The finished work of Christ tells me that. Now, are we going to, we can't argue that we don't, we don't fall or we don't sin, right? Because we do. But the fact of the matter is that sin that we fell in yesterday, we shouldn't be falling in today. Why? Because the more we focus not on ourselves, not on our shortcomings, not on our flesh, the more we focus on Christ, the more we focus on Jesus, the, uh, which is the same, the more we listen to the Holy Spirit, the more we have understanding of the gospel, the less and less we will walk after the flesh. To the, you know, the Bible says the law, it, you can only use the law uh, to use it lawfully. I think it's uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. And he begins, the law is not for a righteous man. You can only be righteous if you're in Christ. You cannot be righteous outside of Christ. So he's not talking about your conduct. He's talking about your position. I can't use the law to convert you. The law couldn't convert a man. The law was in our life to lead us to Christ, Galatians chapter 4. So what perfects us? The Spirit of God. What perfects us? The Spirit of God. What perfects us? The Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God perfects us by leading and guiding us into all truth. So here we go. Okay. Verse 8, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more glory. So the ministry of the Spirit is the ministry of righteousness. Righteousness, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 17, is this. I'll just read it to you because I, Romans 5, 17 is this. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and, say and everybody, that's a conjunction, it's joining two things together, and of the gift of righteousness will reign in this life through Jesus Christ. Righteousness, imputed righteousness. It's not just imputed, right? It's given. You are created in into it. You are made into it. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This isn't theological. This is truth. I mean, it's our theology. It's our, it helps our brains, but it's truth. It's supposed to convert us, supposed to set us free. For even, verse 10 here, 2 Corinthians 3.10, for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect, because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses who put the veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded. 
For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Here's another way Paul said it. Paul said it in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The natural man cannot receive the things of God because they are moronic to him. He cannot understand them. A man considered blind is a man that's dead in sin. A man that's alive is considered alive because they're in Christ and they're awakened and born into the family of God. But even to this day, verse 15, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Some of you out there think you're blind and you're not blind. The devil lies to you. You're not blind. You're not dead in your sins. You're not worthless. Say this with me. I can see. I hear you. Say it. I can see. Verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from sin. Why? Because you were born in, sin had dominion over you in death. Now sin no longer has dominion over you. Paul said it another way. In Romans 8, 2, it says, for the law of the spirit. Listen to me, the law of the spirit. Now this is all connecting. I know I'm going around a big mountain here for you, but it's all connecting. Galatians chapter 3 says, having begun in the spirit. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 in the beginning says the, the law of the spirit, or the spirits, the law of the spirit is much more glorious. And now here we are again, reestablishing the fact that, that the spirit of God is, is the one that brings the glory of God into our life. But there's a law. The law of the spirit of life, Romans 8, 2, sets you free. That means you're already free from the law of sin and death. The law. That's how Paul described it. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. You know, death cannot hold you. You know, we talk about him. Death cannot hold him. Death cannot hold us. See, if we, if we would really believe that this book is like a, a spiritual book from heaven and not believe it's a the, theological book to learn, we would be changed. Because this book is supposed to be experiential. Why does the church not have power? Because it don't believe who it is. We don't believe who we are. All right, that's my soapbox. Verse 18, I'll finish with this. I have no idea how long I can go forever, but I'll finish with this, hopefully. 2 Corinthians 2, 18. But we all with unveiled faces, say it again, I can see. I can see. What can you see? You can see the glory of God. You can see the face of Jesus Christ. You can see. You can see the truth. You can see yourself in Christ. You can. Yes, you can. You can see it. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into, look at that, into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And even in that, in, you know, translation, there's, you know, there's this assumption that, that we're not everything we, we should be. No. Jesus said, if you're my disciples indeed, you'll continue in my word and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. What's progressive? Progressive is the knowledge of the truth in our souls. And the more we obtain truth, the more we walk in who we already are. I said who you already are. It's crazy, right? We're, we're, we're already something, but we're, we're, but we're becoming what we already are. You're already righteous. You're already holy. You're already full of power. Your name is already written in the Lamb's book of life. You're already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You already have the mind of Christ because the Spirit of the Lord is on the inside of you, and he that is joined to the Spirit of God is one with him. Ah, 1 Corinthians 6, I think verse... Well, I got to get that right. What is it? 17, 1 first, uh, first Corinthians 6, 17. I want to get these right just in case you guys, you know, go back over it again. 1 Corinthians uh, 6. 
No, nope, it's not 617. It's 6, not 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. I got two people I can preach to today. That's all I need. Actually, I really only need one. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6. I think it's verse 17. Let's see. Yep, 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 it sure is. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the very last verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, who may instruct the who may instruct the Lord, but ye have the mind of Christ. Why do you have the mind of Christ? Because if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it's all talking about the wisdom of God, hidden in a mystery, given to you by the Spirit of God. We've not received the spirit of this age, but we've received the spirit of the Lord, that we might know the things freely given to us by him. I can keep going. You want me to keep going? I'm just telling you, man, men and women, young and old, male or female, rich or poor, when you're saved, you got wholly saved, H or W H O. L-L-Y, holy, spirit, soul, and body, every part of you, and you were born again, and you may, or actually, I love the, better translation is you're born from above. You can't, you can't add to the, you can't add to the finished work of, you can't add to the work of God, you just can't do it. And the more you rest in the finished work of God, the more you'll see more you'll see the manifestation of righteousness, of holiness, of power, because that's who you really already are. So guys, I wanted to bring that to you today, conversations with David Balzer, have a little conversation with you about the righteousness of God in Christ, uh, encouraging you, admonishing you. Uh, you, know, you need nothing else but Christ. You need to focus on the gospel. You need to understand what it is by the power of the Spirit. I'm just a seed sower. I'm just a waterer. But it's God who will take this seed or this water that's been planted in your heart, and he'll bring increase. You know, the Bible says uh, Jesus talked about the kingdom being as a woman who sowed leaven in three measures, and when she did, it permeated the whole loaf. Now, this is just my opinion, but I think your spirit, your soul, and your body is a good place to start. <laughs> Don't lose hope. Don't allow that to defeat. Don't allow the lies that you believe in your life and the enemy to take you away from what Christ has already done. You know what? You don't have to be afraid of that because God will keep you. You want me to give you another scripture? He is able to keep you from falling and to present you before the throne faultless with exceeding joy. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. I'll be doing this a little bit more. Andy, just to let you know if you're on here, I couldn't find that um, conversation with David Balls or a little tag that you that you had in the in the thing. So I just went with Brook for House of Worship. All right, guys, remember um, tomorrow night, seven o'clock here, Wild Ones. I want to see you here. We invite you to come tomorrow morning sometime, 10, 11 o'clock, somewhere around there. Look for the notification when we go live for Flow and Grow. Remember, March 10th, it's coming up. There is a, um, in, in Dubois Mall at the new cafe there, there is a, um, where the old Arby's was at, there is a, a church on the go. Uh, I believe it starts around 6 o'clock. But you can go to our Facebook page, Brook House of Worship. You can go to our webpage, brookfilesofworship.com, get all that information there. And lastly, guys, the Lord placed it upon your heart to give. Go to brookfilesofworship.com. There's a link there that you can, you can push and you can, what we're really looking for is, is people who will partner with us and, um, on a monthly basis so we can continue to, to go and to do what God's called us to do at the same time. You go there, uh, there's a link on there as jesusshirts.net. We have, I can't show you here, but I'm pointing at it. We got hats, we got beanies, we got, we got sweatshirts, we got sweatpants, we got t-shirts. And they all talk about, well, they talk about a lot of things about Jesus. Well, about one thing in particular, but many sayings. Guys, I love you. Andy loves you. Nicole loves you. Tiffany loves you. We all love you here at Brookfield House of Worship. Check us out. Share, share, share. Um, 
It really gives us joy to know that you guys come on, hop on, and stay on. And, and we appreciate that. So let me pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face in favor to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you shalom, wholeness and healing, peace and safety, uh, nothing missing and nothing broken anymore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. See you next time on Conversations with David Balzer. 